Well, everyone, it's time for us to go ahead and compare the iPhone 14 and the iPhone SE 3, the 2022 model that just came out earlier this year, and see how both these iPhones hold up. Now, if you want to pick up either one of these phones, links will be down in the description. You can get them from there. You can help support the channel at the same time. Now, side by side, you can definitely tell there are some massive differences between both. The iPhone SE 2022 model does have a 4.7-inch IPS panel on the front, and it is definitely not the you know newest-looking phone. It's not an ugly phone, but it definitely looks a little bit more dated. You have big bezels on the top and bottom. You have a home button with Touch ID, which I love Touch ID, but I just don't like the bezels on the top and bottom. But you are getting it in a 4.7-inch form factor, which is very small. It's an IPS panel, and a lot of people may like the smaller phone. I mean, it's definitely a much smaller form factor, and it is $429. So it's definitely not the same price as the iPhone 14, but it's not a cheap iPhone either, but it is what it is. You know, I think it's a you know okay price phone. I mean, I'd recommend buying an iPhone 11 or something over that one. With the iPhone 14, on the other hand, we have a 6.1-inch Super Retina XDR OLED display, and it is a much better panel. It's a bigger panel as well. You have a notch, but definitely I'll take the little bit of bezel in the notch over the amount of bezel that you're getting on something like the iPhone SE 3. You're also getting the same 60 hertz, but again, OLED displays definitely look much better in my opinion than the IPS panels that we have on the iPhone SE 3. So in terms of the front, definitely we get an edge on the iPhone you know, 14. In terms of thinness and thickness, you guys can kind of tell as well. The iPhone 14 is a much thicker phone than the iPhone SE 3. The SE 3 is, it looks almost like half the size, but it's not quite. It's probably like, it's, it's much thinner. It's one of the thinner iPhones I've ever used personally. You are getting the flat side on the 14, which makes it feel a little bit thicker. But it's funny, the build quality seems almost identically the same. Like, they both have kind of the same type of styling, but you can tell that the iPhone 14 is much more of a premium flagship. A dual camera setup on the iPhone 14, single camera setup on the iPhone SE 3. We have the same Apple logos in the center, wireless charging on both. We do get MagSafe capability on the iPhone 14. And that kind of covers it up on the outside, the lightning ports on the bottom of both. However, we do get a SIM card tray on the side of the iPhone SE 3 that we have right here. With the iPhone 14, we do not have a SIM card tray, which is kind of unfortunate. It is kind of annoying, but again, it is what it is. What are we going to do about it? But that kind of covers it up on the outside. Now, in terms of software and longevity, this is another somewhat minor thing it's not going to be that big of a difference between these two the very interesting thing is the iphone se3 came out earlier this year you know if you follow iphones you know that the se lineup pretty much has older body styles but it has the same chipset as the iphone before so this has the a15 chip which is fairly new but the weird thing is the iphone 14 also has the same chipset inside like the exact same one i think this one is clocked a little higher it's not like an a15x or anything like that so it's going to be interesting to see how the longevity plays out even though the iPhone SE 3 is cheaper and it came out like a little bit earlier this year than the iPhone 14, I don't know if it's going to be, you know, I don't think the 14 is going to outlast this iPhone. I think they're going to last probably around the same time. I don't see how Apple would justify that the iPhone 14 is going to end up lasting longer than the iPhone SE 3 because they have the same chipsets inside. So it's going to be very interesting to see what Apple ends up doing in the future, but I wouldn't really freak out about the longevity of either of these phones anytime soon. Now let's go into a speed comparison between both these iPhones. They both have the Apple A15 Bionic chip inside of it. However, the iPhone SE 2022 model has the 4GB of RAM, where the iPhone 14 has 6GB of RAM inside. So let's go and see which one is the faster one between both. Okay, there we go. All the apps are cleared out in the background, as you all can tell. So let us get into it. Hopefully it looks good over the camera. Let's open up their phone calls. 3, 2, 1. Okay, let's go and hop out of here. Let's do music. 3, 2, 1. And about the same thing, I think the 14 was slightly faster. Hopping out of here, let's go and get into settings, 3, 2, 1. And these phones are flying all over the place right now. Okay, let's go and hop out of here. Let's go and get into mail, 3, 2, 1. Okay, let's go and get into app store, 3, 2, 1. Okay, definitely I think the iPhone 14 was slightly faster there. Scrolling through, I don't know if there's going to be that big of a difference. Again, they're both at 60 hertz. Let's go to clock, 3, 2, 1. About the same thing. Let's do camera. Three, two, one. About the same thing too. Let's go and take a photo. And let's go ahead and open up that photo. I think it was a little bit faster on the iPhone. Photos. Three, two, one. I honestly don't know which one's faster. It's kind of weird. Let's go and hop out of this one. Let's go ahead and get into some of these third-party applications. So let's get into stack. Three, two, one. Okay, a little bit of a pop-up here. Very annoying. Another pop-up, which is very annoying. I don't know if it was going to be faster with those pop-ups or not. Facebook, three, two, one. About the same thing. 
Let's do temple run two, three, two, one. Oh, I messed that one up completely. Let me go ahead and try this one again. Temple run two again, three, two, one. So many of these pop-ups on the iPhone SE3. I have no idea why we're getting all these pop-ups on this phone, considering I've already used this phone quite a bit. So very, very strange. You can see the iPhone 14 probably, even with a little bit of leeway, was probably still going to end up beating it. But I don't think it probably would have been that big of a difference, to be honest. Snapchat, three, two, one. Okay, iPhone 14 definitely faster there. It's Twitter, three, two, one. Okay, iPhone SE 3 was actually faster there a little bit. Netflix, three, two, one. Another pop-up here for no reason at all. You have to give the iPhone SE 3 a little bit of leeway. Thank you, three, two, one. And kind of the same thing too. We can go ahead and try Genshin Impact, although I don't think I have it on this phone. But regardless, I actually do think that the iPhone SE 3 did a pretty good job today. You know, it's definitely not the fastest phone of all time, but it did a pretty decent job, which it should be. They have the same chipset inside. But I do think the iPhone 14 is probably the faster one. It's also a smoother one. Having to use the home button and everything can be a little bit outdated, it seems like. I do think with the gesture-based design, it makes the phone feel that much smoother. Even like an iPhone 10 kind of feels a little bit smoother and faster in ways than the iPhone SE 3, even though this one has a newer chipset. It's because of the home button, you have to keep clicking it on. So that kind of covers it up there. Another massive difference was with the camera setups on the back. So you can even see for yourself, look how much smaller the camera setup is on the iPhone SE 3 than on the iPhone 14. Dual camera setup on the back of the 14 wide and ultra wide lens. The iPhone SE 3 single wide angle lens, 12 megapixel sensors, although you have the ability of doing 4K 60 on the back of both, but only 1080p on the front of the iPhone SE 3, we can do 4K 60 on the front of the iPhone 14. Now with the iPhone SE 3, I think this camera is okay. Like it is almost identically the same thing as the iPhones, like the iPhone SE 2. It was not that big of a difference at all. You're missing things like cinematic mode, you know, 4K 60 on the front, but I would say for an average camera, it's not bad. You know, it, uh, it could get the job done for the most part. I've taken some pretty decent photos from this thing before, but I don't know, like it's not the greatest camera. It probably will get the job done, like I said, but other than that, I don't really think this is a phone I would recommend buying like just for the camera. It has a decent camera. You can utilize it within a lot of different Snapchat applications, like different apps like Snapchat, Instagram, and TikTok, but it's really not the best quality of all time. Keep that in mind. With the iPhone 14, it is a completely different story. This thing has massive lenses on the back, and you also have a really good front camera as well. You know, this thing, first of all, that ultra-wide sensor is really nice. Being able to zoom out a lot is a super nice feature within these phones. Being able to zoom in a lot is really cool too. I mean, you can go ahead and do both on a phone like this, which is really cool. You also have cinematic mode, which is really awesome. So you can go ahead and pretty much utilize, you know, cinematic mode, I think, at 4K now, which is really nice. And it's a really good camera. You can zoom in a lot too. It's definitely not the perfect lens of all time, but I think it'll get the job done for the most part. And it is a much better camera than the iPhone, you know, SE3 in my opinion. So in terms of that, that kind of covers it up there. And to be honest, I would definitely tell you going from an iPhone SE3 to an iPhone 14 is a pretty big upgrade. You know, I'm not the one to just say, oh, get the newest one because it's way better. This is a classic case of a newer iPhone like this one being much better and faster and just overall better phone than the iPhone SE3. You're getting better battery life, better cameras, better build quality, better display, like everything is better on the iPhone 14. The only reason I would recommend buying an SE3 is if you were gifted one or if you were given one or you can find one like on a super cheap website somewhere, then probably buy it. Other than that, for $429, this thing is not worth it. I would recommend buying an iPhone 11 over this thing. An iPhone 12 is still being sold for, I think, $599 by Apple. So that makes way more sense than this thing as well. So if it's between these two, the 14 is a much better phone. But I do think you can get like an iPhone 12, even an iPhone 11. Even an iPhone 10 might be better than this one, to be honest. So we'll just kind of end it there. If you have any other thoughts or questions, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, know me so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly, everything else I love, every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.